All right, this is a review for pre-calculus. We want to just get into some problems with binomial expansion and binomial probability. There's two formulas that are very similar for each, and we'll just talk about them briefly. If you want more information, you go back to the original videos to see what we did there for development and more in depth. But this is just kind of get in there and get out. So first one, binomial expansion. When we do a binomial expansion here, what we want to try to do is take this binomial and expand it, raising it to the fourth power. So we use Pascal's triangle, and we can write it out here. And since this is raised to the fourth power here, we're going to use this row right here. This is called the zeroth row, so this is the fourth row. This matches up with this term all the time for Pascal's triangle. To find any term in Pascal's triangle, you can use the choose notation to get us there. So for this one, what would happen is that I'd always have four, which is my n, and then I'm going to be choosing r depending upon where I am here. This first term would be 4 choose 0. And then I'm going to take this first term, well, let's do it in terms of x first. I like to say take x and raise it to the fourth, and then y is going to be raised to the 0. This is kind of the generic form that we're dealing with here. So 4 choose 1, that would give me my 4 here, and then I'd have x to the third, y to the first, and so on. Okay, so we're going to write that all out in terms of x and y. Then we're going to put in the 2x and the negative 3y. So in doing this, I get a 1x to the fourth plus 4x to the third y plus 6x squared y squared. And then 4xy cubed. And then my last term is 1y to the fourth. Now, wherever I see this x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a 2x. And wherever I see this y, I'm going to replace it with the 3y. Making that substitution, I kind of color-coded this. So this would be 2x goes in here where the x was, and then the negative 3y goes in where the y is. And then so I put that all in. Now, if we multiply this all out, what happens is that this 2 has to be raised to the fourth power. So that would give me 16x to the fourth plus. Now with this one, I get the 4 and the 8 and the negative 3. So that's going to be negative 96, I believe, if I multiply all that out, x cubed, y. And then if I do this 4, and then this is a 9, that's 36 times 6, I believe that's 216. So I get 216, this would be x squared, and then y squared. And you can finish that up. And notice with this minus, we get an alternating sequence, so it's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay? So that's how I've set it up, and that's how I like to do it. And you can either use Pascal's triangle, it's not too far down, or else you can actually use the choose notation to find the coefficient, or helping him find the coefficient of each term. But don't forget to include this 2 to the third and this negative 3 when you do the final coefficient for that term. Now look at this example. Find the coefficient of the x to the 6th, y to the 5th term. Well, we have a little bit of problem with this because I have it nested in x squared. And this is to the 8th power. So in general, I'm going to have 8 in my r. And then my x term would be 2x squared raised to the n minus r power. And I'm going to have my y term, which is negative 4y, raised to the r, r power. This would be my general term. Now, the problem is that I can't figure out where this one is directly. But if you do notice, this r matches up with this r. So right now, this is going to tell me that I need exponent of 5 there. It's actually my sixth term because I started at 0. But this would be a 5. And then n minus r, that would be a 3. So if I write this out, I'm going to get 8, choose 5, simply because of that. And then this is going to be 2x squared to the third power. And this one would be negative 4y to the fifth power. And if I multiply this out, power to a power, I'm going to get that x to the sixth term. I'm not going to finish this out for you to calculate it, but you find out what this is, 2 to the third, what that is, and then negative 4 to the fifth, that will give you your coefficient that you need. And if you do put this into your calculator, 
you can find this coefficient just by typing it in. Now, if you notice, you can also put in the X and the Y, and it will expand it for you. It will give you the answer. This one's wrong. Sorry, the second one's wrong. This third one gives me the X to the sixth, Y to the fifth, is, which is what I wanted. NCR, where is that again? Menu, go to probability, and then combinations would give it to you. There it is. Okay, then this would be eight choose five. Okay, let's get into binomial probability then. Binomial probability is a little bit different because we have N choose R and then it's P to the R. Remember, P is your probability of success. Q is your probability of failure. These exponents are switched around from what we just had. So you just have to put the how many successes you're looking for on the P and then you should be in business. So in a multiple choice test, you have 10 problems and five answer selections, A through E for each. Assuming that you randomly choose answers, what's the probability that you get them all right? Well, what is your probability of success? That's the first thing that we should look at. Well, if there's five selections, you get a one of five chance of getting it correct. So your probability of failure is four out of five. So if you went through and guessed all of these, you would have one fifth raised to the 10th power and then you'd also have four fifths raised to the zero. This trivializes this formula a little bit, but I'm going to do it anyways. And so you have 10 items, and then now the R that you're going to be selecting here is going to be equivalent to that right there. So in doing this, this becomes a one, and then so it's just one fifth to the tenth, which makes sense. You just have one fifth each time and use your multiplication properties um, to sort that out. So this is going to be one fifth to the tenth. Okay, so if you were to guess and get all 10 correct, you would have a very, very small chance. This E negative 7, remember, means times 10 to the negative 7. So this is the probability of you getting them all right. All right? So three zero, uh, six zeros and then one, two, four. Not very good. Okay, what's the probability you get 6 out of 10 correct? This should be more likely, correct? Well, let's see. If I do the same thing, I'm going to have 10 selections. I'm going to be trying to choose six of them correctly. So one fifth, that's going to be raised to the six. Four fifths, how many times am I going to be failing then if I get six correct? Well, that's going to be four. So typing this in, oh yes, it is better, but not much better. To get six out of 10 correct, that's about a half a percent. And then that 5.5%, we don't write it as percent since it's probability. So it's going to be 0.0055. Now, if you get at least six out of 10, this is where we get a probability distribution. And we should set up a probability distribution chart for ourselves. So in setting up a probability distribution chart, and that's what we can call this is a probability distribution chart, and because it tells me how I spread out for all of my values. And so with this, this would mean that I would get zero out of 10, one out of 10, two out of 10, three and four. So if I fill this in, I need all of these values and add them up all the way up to 10 because it says at least six out of 10 correct. So for instance, you need 60% on your test in order to keep your grade where it's at. I don't know if that's good or bad, but then uh, we need to find all of these values in order to do that. Now I can calculate these one by one. If it's not too many, it's not so bad, but with 10 of them, pain. So let's go to our calculator and do it there. So here we can go menu and we go probability distributions and then we go down here to binomial PDF. Okay, so we have this number of trials. We had 10 and probability of success would be 0.2. And then we want to do it for all x values. So it's going to pump all of these out. And so there's my distribution. Wow, not nice with all of these uh, decimal places, but you can transfer those over and put them into your chart. So now you can take these values in and add them up. Well, these are both about zero. And so what's happening is that you're just very close to getting right about the six out of 10. If I want to calculate this exactly, I can go to the calculator and you can do a binomial cumulative. We didn't talk much about this, so don't worry about this too much, but it's nice to see. Uh, sorry, wrong one. And if I go to probability and then distributions, and then I got the binomial CDF. And so I can do number of trials. Probability of success again is 0.2. Lower bound, I want six, 
and then I want to finish up at 10. So it's at least 6, which means 6 to 10. And when they put this in, it doesn't like me because I had something left over, but it should be able to do this. And there it is. So it's a little bit more than 0 0.0055. Okay? So that would be the probability that you get at least a 60% if you're just guessing. Not very good. So make sure you know your math when you go to your test to take uh, and deal with this binomial probability idea and also binomial expansion. I hope this helps you. Get you back into it. There we go. Binomial expansion, binomial probability. Thanks.